Welcome back. So today's video I'm super excited for. So I put out a post, or a poll, I guess I, I put out a poll on Twitter and um, I got five votes total and they were all yes to make this video. So today I just wanted to talk about my process with adopting Sadie Dog, who will be making appearances here and there, but she's on the chair that's over there. Just a little bit of backstory. We got Sadie um, in November, November 16th, and we adopted her from the shelter. Sadie is the first dog that I have like personally adopted from the shelter. Um, growing up, I'll put a picture here, I had Rosie Dog, and I got her when I was 10 years old, and then we lost her two years ago. And I honestly thought, I'm just never going to get another dog. I'm just going to get Border Collies forever. Like, I was just, I was heartbroken. I mean, she was my pup. I was like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe we should get a dog. You know, I was talking to Matt about it. And, you know, dogs are fun. I've always loved cats and dogs equally, because yes, you can love them equally. And... I was also just concerned though because we do have my kitty cat Indy who's down here because my animals always follow me everywhere. We got Indy three years ago and he's like my firstborn. I love him so much so I just wanted to be very... Stop it. But he still misses, misbehaves. I wanted to be very cautious about what animal we did get next because he was first priority of that decision. I didn't want to do anything that would hurt him or just anything like that. The adjustment for him has been hard, but again, I'll talk about that later. I literally think he's right behind the bed. Yep, he is right Indy. Did you guys hear him? Oh, no! Stop. Oh my god. <sighs> so, this, these are my animals. Indy, do you mind? Okay, so let me just... Excuse me, sir! Stop! Look at that freak! <sighs> no, Sadie, sit! Guys, this is what I'm talking about. Get, sit! Sit! <sighs> right here. Come on! Come on! No, not you! Sadie, sit! Make an appearance. Saders! Okay, so Sadie's right here now. Where was I? We got Sadie um, in November, the week before Thanksgiving, and we really weren't sure if we were going to get a dog. We um, discussed it. We thought, okay, you know, it would be fun. It would be, f it would be fun to have a dog. Um, we, Matt and I both love dogs so much. So we looked at two shelters, and the first shelter, it's not the animal's fault. Okay, I cannot be more clear that it is not the animal's fault about how animal shelters are being run ran. But we did not like this shelter. We did not like how the staff was with us. Not the animals that I saw. There was no abuse. Don't freak out. It was just how the shelter was. We were like, okay, what dogs do you have? Are they good with cats? What do you know about these dogs and all this stuff? They weren't very knowledgeable about their animals. So after like testing a dog out, like he was a good dog, but he was just, it wasn't a good fit for us. We didn't want to take this dog home. And they told us at the first shelter, they said, you could take this dog home and sample him, and then if you don't like him, bring him back. I think that's the worst thing you could do with a, to an animal, is to adopt this dog or a cat for a few weeks to see if they're a good fit for you, and if you don't like them, bring them back to the pound. So let's just keep giving these animals false hope. No, I don't like that. So, of course, we're like, no, thank you, we're not interested in that. So we left, <clears throat> and then the next day, we went to the shelter where we found Sadie. And I was a little discouraged after the first one, and I was like, well, we can't rush into this. We can't just pick a dog, you know, the first one we see. We have to be smart. And with doing that, we went to the second shelter the next day, and it was like night and day difference between these two shelters. We love this shelter. I think that it is run by wonderful people. Everybody was just so knowledgeable about the dogs, even the cats, like everything, like the facility was just much cleaner, it was nicer. Of course, you know, it's still loud, it's still a shelter, you know, all that, but it was just kept very nicely. We just went and we looked at all the dogs, and we knew that, of course, if they weren't good with cats, it was a no-go. 
and some of them they knew right off the bat if they were good or not but they told us they said we will cat test your dog right in front of you and that made me feel like 100 percent better like i was like i have to protect indy he has to be safe so we weren't looking for like a big old like massive dog which i love those but we we're just like let's not like just dive right into this dog pool let's just you know see what we find and all that we looked at a couple different dogs and we looked you know there's probably like five or six maybe seven dogs there and the first dog we looked at there he was so funny looking okay so he was like stumpy he was like look at me i'm a stumpy dog and his head was huge like he just had the world's biggest head for how short and stumpy he was matt really liked him it wasn't love at first sight for me but matt really liked him he was a nice dog and he did pass the cat test where they took the dog in the cat room and just walked around like as soon as the dog would lunge at a cat growl frisk their hair anything immediately they'll take the dog out they don't want to scare the cats even more and <clears throat> they would be considered a not cat friendly dog we were happy that he was cat or cat friendly and i still wasn't like a hundred percent like this is the dog for us so matt and i were just like we were just talking to him and petting with him and he wasn't like socializing as much with us as we wanted to which that's okay like they're not gonna just come right out of the gate and be like i love you let me be friends forever like they're not gonna do that we were just sitting there and then the, the staff kind of just had like a miscommunication but nothing in a bad way they just said that this dog had actually been adopted already and the owners were going to pick him up um this afternoon and i was like oh my gosh like that's wonderful like I don't, i'm not mad at all like this is great he has a home like i was just really happy about that we um took him back you know put him back in his little pen and they were like well you might like the dog that was right beside him um at the time her name was sally sally sue and they're like you might like sally and i was like okay like let's check her out and we saw her but like of course how all dogs like jump up on like the pen and stuff they're like don't worry like that's just a front she puts on in front of the other dog she's not really like that so we went back in there and i kind of snuck in like quickly after the lady who worked there and i noticed sadie um she was just sitting she was just like this laying down in her pen while all the other dogs had already started to bark but then all of a sudden she just was like okay i'll just i'll jump up now but she was still very calm when all the other dogs had no reason to be barking but they were still barking because of that i was like well that's a good sign because i you know if the dog jumps like it's okay but i'm gonna train them to not do that of course so we got sadie and we went into the socialization room um she was a little bit more responsive than the other dog and she was just like you know hey how are you like i'm gonna wag my tail i'm just happy and she really liked the lady who worked there which naturally she saw her every day and she's just now meeting me and matt so we went into the kitty cat room and she didn't lunge she didn't do anything she was very good with the cat i was like oh my gosh yes this is wonderful so we went back in the socialization room she's not really big with toys she didn't want to play fetch or anything like that which that was okay so matt and i talked it over and we're like yeah like let's let's do this like she seems like she'll be a really good fit with us like we like her she likes us so let's adopt this dog so we were approved that day because you have to do an application process you can't just like take the dog home it's very thorough very safe they call your vet if you have any previous animals just to see how you treat them all of that stuff so we adopted sadie and we took her home that day and the first thing she did when she got home was she just jumped on the couch and just laid down and we were like what like how do you know what a couch is and like excuse me like did we tell you you could get on the couch no but i already knew in my heart i didn't care like the, the, let the dog sit on the couch with you like i'm just that person i just love it so i was just like okay like this is this is interesting and that night she just laid right in between me and matt i'll put a picture right here she just laid right in between me and matt and was just so calm and all of that and she actually she was first she was really scared of the cat she didn't like indy indy showed his dominance right away so she would like take the long way around um the house to get to me or to matt or to wherever she was going and she was just terrified fast forward to today where she's still not harmful to indy by any means she's not mean she does not bite him 
nothing like that, because trust me, I would put a stop to that immediately. But they chase each other. Indy kind of gets mad at that, but he's a cat, so I mean, I still will be like, okay guys, like, let's stop, like, let's be friends, like, don't do this, you know, I'm still, like, a little on guard with it, but they're very good together. Like, right now, Sadie's laying on one chair, Indy's laying on the other, like, everybody's in harmony right now. Sadie, as soon as I start talking to Indy, Sadie will come up to me and be like, well, pay attention to me, so, like, sometimes I have to make sure me and Indy still get our kitty mama snuggle time and all of that because that's very important to me. He's my firstborn. I have to make sure that he knows I still love him because I'm just that crazy. <laughs> just kidding. You guys probably out there, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I'm just going to talk about the things that were an adjustment for us because coming from the shelter, you don't know where your dog has been. You have to be very cautious and you have to be very patient because if you're not patient with your dog, right after they come from a shelter, like, you could hurt them more, and it could just never be a good fit for you guys, and you don't want that. So you want to just be really patient, of course, with your new shelter dog. Sadie, we don't know anything about her. We knew she was dropped off. That was it. So unfortunately, we didn't have anything else to work with. So because of that, it was really an adjustment at times. She was okay with walking on a leash. She had no problem with that. She instantly fell in love with me and Matt. And I'm not going to be like, oh my gosh, she loves me more, but she does come to me first. She loves when I come home. She gets so excited. But at the same time, when I let her out, when Matt gets home, she's still so happy. She runs up to him. She loves to snuggle with Papa. Like, she still loves both of us, but like, I think if Matt and I were on each side of the room and we called her, I think she would come to me. But that's not saying that she doesn't like Matt any less. She's very grateful, I can tell, just with her face and her mannerisms, that we're both equally loving to her. And I had to make sure, I had to tell Matt that you need to just socialize a little bit more, get on her level, you know, have some one-on-one -on -one pop -a puppy time. Like, you need to just make sure that she knows like, your intentions and who you are. She had, at first, pretty bad um, separation anxiety. So, the minute we got her, we went and we bought a cage because we knew we were going to crate this dog. And crating is not bad. You put them in there when you leave the house and if you need to, when you go to bed. I was afraid of how she would act when we went to sleep when we first got her. For the first month, we put her in her crate at night. I didn't, I knew I didn't want to always do that, but we needed to start that routine so she knew her boundaries and what to do and all of that. So she just honestly, for the first, probably two, for the, almost for the majority of the month, she would whine in her cage and she would bark a little bit when we went to bed, but it would only last for about maybe 20 minutes at the most, but some, it normally was just like 10 minutes. She would just stop, she would lay down, and she would sleep for the rest of the evening. It was fine. I had no problems with that. She was, you know, very cautious, or she was well behaved in her cage after that. We never had any accidents, anything like that. That was a plus. But then one day I just left her out of her cage at night, and she did fine. She does like to get in the trash. Found that out the hard way. So we do have to hide the trash can at night. We, it's just a learning process. You have to make sure like, the dog knows who's boss, but you're still working with them to find out their personality. <sighs> I think there's a train coming. Hold on, guys. <sighs> um, <laughs> the train has passed. Honestly, we want to leave her out of her cage when we leave the house. We don't like that we have to cage her, but we tried to leave her out of her cage for a little bit when we were gone. I feel like the first couple times it was okay. One day she just, she lost it. She destroyed the trim around my door. She destroyed the brand new doorknob we installed. She, like she bent it with her teeth. Um, ripped apart my earmuffs that I used to wear. That's why I don't wear them anymore. Uh, but she went to the windowsill of the kitchen and she chewed that up and there's like a big chunk taken out of that. She got up on the table and like took everything off the table and chewed on that tore that all to pieces and I would I came home and I was hot and I mean I did the only thing that I knew what to do and I scolded her 
we put her in the timeout, which happened to be her crate, but she knew. She knew what we were doing. I was just, I was furious. I was like, what the freaking heck? Like, oh my gosh, like my dog just destroyed my house. We just bought this house. We spent so much money. What is it, like, what's going on? I was just so, I was so mad. And I had to clean up all her mess. And like, she stayed in puppy timeout for so long that day. And we have yet to uncrate her when we leave the house since that day. And that was... That was before December 18th, so, because I had an open house that day. I don't know. It was before Christmas, so we, and we've been creating her for almost two months now when we leave the house. So that, that's the biggest, like, thing you don't, you don't know about a shelter dog. You don't know if they're going to destroy your house. You don't know if they're just going to sleep in peace. Like, because every other time that my dog is out of her cage with me or Matt, just laying down, being a good dog, like, she's fine. Like, right now, she's just asleep. She's perfect. Like, she's literally an angel dog. We couldn't have asked for a better dog from the pound because she only barks when the doorbell rings. She, which is good, that lets me know that someone's there. I want that. She listens to us when we call her because we have recently started to let her outside off of a leash when we are present. Okay? So we will let her outside to go potty or if we go to check the mail, work on the barn, we let the dog outside and we, we don't put a leash on her. So she'll run around the yard and do all that, do her business, but if she starts to head towards the road or she goes back behind the barn, all I have to do is holler for her and she'll be right there. She'll come back. And I love that. Like, I'm so thankful for that because, like, I honestly, I'd have to tie her up all the time if she wouldn't listen. Another thing that when you're adopting a shelter dog, you don't know how they're going to react to simple things like going up and down stairs. Now, Sadie walked up and down the stairs for our porch, and when you come into our house, there's three stairs and then there's your, there's your living room. So she walked up and down those, fine. But for the first two weeks, for the first two weeks, she would not go up and down the stairs to get to the second story. And she would go up, but then when we learned the very hard way, she would not go down the stairs. Her little paws stretched out, and she was like, don't make me do it. Like, Matt had to take her, like, pick her up and take her down the stairs. And at first, Matt was like, well, that's fine, because, you know, like, we might not want her to go upstairs all the time. Like, what if she just goes up there and, like, chews on something? Because we weren't sure yet. But I'm over here thinking, I'm like, no, Matt, what happens when we fix up our game room, when we hang out in the game room, and our dog's not with us because she's downstairs? Like, I was just like, no, she has to learn. So, we did some training, and this is why I think Sadie responds to me a little bit more. Not saying that Matt is a bad doggy dad, because he's not, but I was the one who took the time to train her to go up and down the stairs. Like, I just, I did that on my days off and things like that. So... We used turkey treats, which at the time I only had lunch meat. I didn't buy any dog treats yet. So we used turkey treats, and I just took little pieces of lunch meat, because I don't want to get her used to people food, but little pieces of turkey, and I would lay them on the stairs. Now, we didn't just go ham and just... (laughs) Turkey and ham. (laughs) Sorry. We just didn't go ham and go all the way upstairs the first day. Like, I wasn't going to torture her like that, because she was uncomfortable. So there's a landing... Like, you go up two stairs, there's a square landing, and then you go up the rest of the stairs. So, I was able to just call her to come sit on the landing with me before we even practiced on the stairs. So, I knew that was a good start. So, we ate some turkey treats right there, and then I slowly brought her up the stairs. Uh, That was fine to get her up there, but she was still really, really scared to come back down. So, of course, then we had to pick her up and we had to bring her down. After that, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do this for a while. I don't want to stress her out. What if Matt's not home? I can't pick her up and I don't want to just drag her on her leash because that's not very nice. We just practiced and we went halfway up the stairs and she was comfortable to turn around and head back down. So, I just made sure that... We just did about half of the stairs, and then we just called it a day for the turkey training for the stairs. Then one day, I was just like, all right, Sadie, I have to do some work upstairs. Just stay down here. Be a good dog. Like, don't get in the trash. And the next thing I know, my dog has come upstairs with me. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I rewarded her. I was like, this is wonderful. Like, good girl. Like, you're awesome. And then... I was like, well, how are we going to get downstairs? But, 
you just have to ignore the fact that they're up there and just do your thing and go downstairs. Now, she was a little hesitant, but the next thing I hear is like, and her, she's coming down the stairs. And I was like, yay! So we, we praised her, we gave her treats, we rewarded her for that awesome reaction to what she's doing. Ever since then, she will run up and down the stairs, no problem whatsoever. She does always want to be on your left side which this, I think this is your right. But never mind. She always wants to be like on my left side when she walks up the stairs. So I have to, I have to always make sure when Matt's coming up behind me, I'm like, watch your left. Like, here comes Sadie. <laughs> I'm really thankful for like the improvements that we've already seen with the dog that we adopted from the shelter, seeing how she trusts both me and Matt, how she responds to both of us, and just how we are able to train her. I'm not a dog expert. I've had one I've had two dogs, but Misty passed away when I was in first grade, so I don't remember too much about her, but... So Rosie Pup has been my main dog my entire life, and when I was 10, that's when we got her, so training wasn't the thing that I did the most, because, you know, when you're 10, like, come here, dog! Like, what are you doing? Like, you don't really train her too well, and, like, my dad was a big, you know, reinforcement for training Rosie. So I do remember just watching him, like, as I got older, I would watch him train Rosie in different things and how to respond when you're training a dog, what you're supposed to be doing. You obviously have to discipline in the moment when they're doing something wrong. You have to put them in timeout. Sometimes I would ignore her, knowing that she had done the wrong thing, but then later I would go back and I would talk to her like she's a child, because that's just how I do it. And, you know, I'm like, you can't do this, Sadie. Like, here's why. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I do. I treat them like they're my children because they are my fur children, and I did the same thing with Indy. I literally had to train my seven-week-old kitten. Like, in the next few weeks, I had to teach him how to jump and how to climb on stuff, which I knew he would learn eventually, but, like, I helped him along the way because at the time, my bed was so high, and that was back in college. That's what I did. I just made sure I trained my dog in a way where she would respect me and others. I think that's where I'm going to end the video today. This is a little bit longer than I expected, but I just wanted to talk to you guys about how I got Sadie, why I chose Sadie, the struggles that I've had with Sadie um, in the past three, probably almost four months now that we've had this dog from the shelter. Now we feel like she's been with us for our whole lives. Like, she's great. Like, I'm going to try to wake her up to get her over here. Hey, Saders! Sadie, I'll bring the video to her because she just wants to lay on her chair. Okay, so if you have never seen a video of mine ever, this is Sadie. Hi, baby. Oh, look at her snuggling. Okay, she blends in with the couch. But just see her little tail back there. Oh, Sadie. Good girl. So this is my Sadie dog. We love her so much. Yes, we do. So, Sadie, we're going to end the video right here, but we thank you so much for watching. Yes, we do. And this is just, you know, this is what we have. We have a lazy couch potato dog that just, she does respect us. We've come, we've come a long way from what we were. Um, maybe one day we'll get to the point where we're able to leave her out of her cage when we're not home, but I don't want to find my house destroyed like that again. I just... I just bought this house, you know, like, I have to protect that, too. So, we just keep her in her cage, we give her a treat, and she knows now, as soon as we get ready to leave, we know, or she knows when I start to fill up her toy with treats, she knows exactly what to do. Her tail wagged when I said treat! Oh, good girl! Um, she knows exactly what to do and where to go. So, we're thankful for that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do hope that it was beneficial for you. Um, if you're thinking about getting a shelter dog or anything like that, I mean, I don't know if every situation is like this. I'm sure it's rough for some, but you have to just remember, what was that dog's life like right before you adopted them? What were they used to? I mean, they were, right now, they're used to sleeping on a cold, a cold floor, you know, in their kennel and all of that, but you just have to remember that before that, they may have had a bad life. So you have to just remember to be patient and be kind, of course, because they just have to do what they know what to do to, you know, for that, like, f flight or fight in instinct. But, you know, just, just be patient and give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more of Sadie, she's in several vlogs of mine. And she's an awesome, happy pup. And we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye! Say bye, baby. Oh, look at the sun on her face. Oh, we love her.
We love her! But I'm also going to show my big fat cat. My big fat cat. It's Andy. And Sadie. Bye, guys!